nature of the footprints, namely their remarkable consistency, their uh, biomechanical appropriateness. Spanning the entire globe involving hundreds of different cultures explaining the same phenomenon by different names. At some point, you have to go, even as a scientist, you have to say, well, there's got to be something. It can't all be math. It's Tim and Dana. How are you guys doing? And we are here at the Salt Fork State Park, and we're so excited to have John Hickenbottom with us. Um, John, why don't you tell everybody about who you are? Yeah, so I'm the naturalist here at Salt Fork. It's the biggest park in the state, um, and we're getting excited for the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. So that's, yeah, that's why I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm here talking to these yeah, guys. That's why we're here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. And so, I mean, Salt Fork is probably one of the, would you say it's the hottest spot for Bigfoot yeah, in the state yeah, of I think, Ohio? I think we could, you could pretty safely consider Salt Fork to be the, more or less the capital of, you know, the Bigfoot capital of Ohio. Right. And um, also I've heard that Ohio, just in general, probably has the most Bigfoot sightings uh, east of the Mississippi. Yeah. And if you think about it, we're like the right mix um, of... We're the right mix of like population versus wildland. You know what okay. I mean? People are out a lot. It's, you know, even though we have huge, you know, huge parks and huge green spaces, people are out in them. Right, a lot. right, right. Uh, so if you think about places in the Smokies, there are probably more, you know, pe people don't see every bear that's out in the Smokies. Right. But you know what I mean? It's more rugged. Yeah, yeah. So it's more rugged. So people aren't out. But here, people are out. You know, right. People are out here all year long. And right. um, there's a ton of waterway. I mean, there's a ton of water. A ton in of water in East, I mean, especially yeah. Eastern Ohio. When you get um, into Eastern Ohio, I mean, just right here, we've, this lake is dammed. This is not a natural lake. Right. Um, but just outside the park is Wills Creek, which is a really large uh, tributary of the Muskingum. Right. Uh, we've got the Muskingum River, Tuscaroras River to our north. Yeah. So it's a really uh, lots and lots of waterways. And water's um, important. Water's very important. Especially for a large omnivore. Yeah, water, right. yeah. <laughs> water, food, and shelter. So right. you mentioned that this was dammed. Can you mm -hmm. kind of give like a brief history, brief history. of how yeah. Salt Fork came about? So uh, so initially the park was going to, but the, initially it wasn't a park. Initially the lake was going to be a county reservoir. Um, and the state sort of looked at it. This We're talking like late 50s. Okay. Um, so the state kind of looked at it and said, wow, this is, you know, they dammed it. It turned into this really big lake. Um, so they started buying up properties. They bought up over 200 farms, small, like small hold farms that were in the area. And uh, they just kind of kept, kept buying farms and buying land and eventually became the biggest part. I mean, we're, you know, close to 20,000 acres of public land. Yeah, it's pretty um, crazy because like, just like if you like, rent a cabin here which we're under today we're under raining. one of our cabins yeah. because it's <laughs> raining in ohio but like you literally uh you know when you arrive at salt fork you arrive in the main entrance and you're like yay we're here but it's still like it's another 20 minutes, later, 20 yeah. minutes to yeah. your cabin so it's yeah. like okay that's basically everyone right. that visits that's the first thing if they've never been here before that's the first thing anybody says not not the scenery or anything it's this place is big it it's is really big, big. Yeah. Yeah. it's huge yeah and especially when you're driving from delaware and you've been right. on the road for seven or eight hours right. you're yeah. like i gotta go to the bathroom and you're yeah. like yeah we're here and then you're like where is it <laughs> We're used to it now, though. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. So how long have you been here at the park? Okay. And what do you do? Yeah, so uh, I'll start with what I do. So I'm the naturalist here at Salt Fork, which I handle all the education um, and a lot of the biological survey stuff and things like that. So I deal with, you know, plants and animals and uh, also deal with the public, like, you know, take them on nature hikes and things like that. Um, I do things like this, you know, cool. since I spe especially here at Salt Fork with Bigfoot, you know, being kind of... <laughs> top of our list here right <laughs> um as far as wildlife goes uh and then uh you know little things like that plant and animal surveys um mm -hmm. it's a pretty good pretty good job uh and I, how I long can, have you been here so i uh i started with odnr in 2012 mm -hmm. um i worked because here, what is odnr uh, ohio department of natural resources okay just once yeah. so everybody knows he's yeah. not from ohio yeah. um mm -hmm. I'm, so i'm a naturalist with the ohio department of natural resources division of parks and watercraft is my full uh, full the full, full title, yeah. Cool. Um, so I uh, started here in 2012 as a seasonal naturalist, and that's basically Memorial Day through Labor Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a little after Labor Day. Uh, and I worked two seasons and then transferred to another park. Um, if you've ever been 
another another relatively squatchy park and really rugged and pretty remote uh lake hope state park down in yeah. southern ohio wow. okay yeah. we're gonna have to um, check that out yeah, yeah lake hope's very rugged okay. and uh not nearly as busy as salt fork okay um, Ooh, so, i like that yeah okay. yeah so i was down there for a couple of years and then transferred back up here uh as a full-time naturalist in 2016 so i've been working year-round full-time here since 2016. Very cool. Yeah. So that's a that's a while. I mean, that's enough time yeah. for you to get, you know, hear some crazy stories right. or have some crazy experiences. So and I, I also grew up here. Oh, OK. Uh, this was my so I worked out here in high school. OK. Oh, I, I like I like literally grew up right here in the park. I'm from about 12 miles uh, that away. OK, which is, cool. Might still be in the park. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess 12 miles from the entrance. That oh, direction. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> so can you tell, I mean, do, were you interested in the subject of Bigfoot Ooh. even before you started working here? So th this is this is kind of where. All right. Uh, um, let's hear your story. All right. So uh, <laughs> so growing up here, um, there were always stories about Bigfoot and people mm -hmm. would, you know what I mean? But when you're like local, and people, you know, it's like with anything, when people see things, it's like, can you believe, you know what I mean? Can you really believe that he saw that? What he was squirrel right. hunting and he saw, you know what I mean? Um, do we really think that? I've been out all my life and I've never seen it. You know what I mean? Like, right. you get a lot of that. <laughs> um, so I guess, I mean, as a kid, I was, as a kid, I was interested in it. You kind of go through a phase, you know what I mean? Where you're, we all like where, weird yeah, stuff. Where yeah. Get, oh, yeah, where yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. And then I kind of let it go. And then I went to college. Um, and, um, you know, I, I got that dose of like college, you know, education and skepticism and you know what I mean? Like, so we know exactly what you right, mean. Yeah. Our youngest son is, uh, in his, he's going into his junior year and he's studying biology as yeah. well. And before, when he was younger, he was like oh, all into Bigfoot. Now he's like, eh. but yeah, he's coming this weekend. Oh, cool. oh, that's awesome. So you can like meet him. him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so I got out of college, kind of, I went through a couple, I, I worked for other organizations and things right after college. And then, uh, you know, kind of fast forward to working here. Uh, well, let me pause. You said, did you go to college for this? type? I of did. Okay. I went to uh, natural resources. Okay. Uh, and I'm, my background's in reptiles and amphibians. Oh, okay, I'm a cool. Snake guy. So, um, okay. yeah, that's, uh, actually the, I'm, I'm supposed to take some folks on a salamander hike while, while they're here for the conference. And I don't know if that's hopefully it's warm yeah, enough. <laughs> hopefully it gets warm. Um, but the, uh, yeah, so my background's in that. Um, so kind of fast forward, I, I did a couple of other jobs elsewhere in the state. Uh, I've tried to mostly stay in, in the hill country. I like it over here. Once you get west of Columbus, it's flat and there's nothing but soybeans. And, that's how you know it I mean? is where we live. Yeah. So, so I like, I like unglaciated, you know, little slice of Appalachia right it's here. Cool. I, yeah. It's, it's super really cool. cool. Um, so uh, I start here, and that was, so 2012, I guess Finding Bigfoot would have came out here in 2011. Okay. That's when the episode, I believe, that kind of sparked a lot of, a lot of interest, you know. Well, that, and actually, so just so the folks know, Monster Quest, yeah. Mr. Doug <laughs> yeah. Hitchcock, yeah. Yeah. Are, this, we're actually sitting right where they filmed yeah. the Ohio Grassman, between this location and the cabin next to us is where they shot up the uh the drone, the drone that's cool and everything. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. We're, yeah. we're on location so so yeah the 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 <laughs> right the monster quest and the uh the episode of finding bigfoot and usa today uh came out with a pretty nice article oh okay um cool. about it too so that was like the it was really a kind of a fever pitch at that point right uh, when i got back here but you know being like fresh out of college and everything i'm like oh you know like I wanted to tell people about all the cool birds and snakes and stuff. And then I was having like dads and, you know, cargo shorts coming up. Have you ever seen Bigfoot? And that was like the, you know, and that was like the only thing that anybody ever wanted to talk about, but it was right. never a good discussion about it. You know what I mean? It was always like this sort of joke, joke. you know what right, I mean? Right. And I'm like, you know, so I, uh, I did, um, <clears throat> for a couple of years, I didn't really bother with the Bigfoot thing. You know what I mean? And I was very dismissive of it. Um, and I know, I know, I know it's hard to like change your opinion now in like 2023. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just thankful I didn't do like a Twitter post bashing Bigfoot at this point. Or something, <laughs> because somebody could look up, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, no, I, uh, so I kind of let it go. Like I said, I transferred to another park for a little while, really unwillingly transferred to like I did it to follow full time work. Okay. Which is kind of the nature of this. If anybody, if anybody out there wants to get involved with parks, whether it's national parks or state parks, uh, you got to move <laughs> where the work is. 
Um, so I was seasonal here. I went to another park to go full time. Okay. Um, and came back here. And when I came back here, the naturalists that had kind of filled in in the interim, like, or not filled in, I mean, the naturalists that worked here in the interim, uh, she had kind of farmed out the Bigfoot thing. Uh, I had done two one-off hikes um, that were during the day, and it was sort of a trick to get people out in the woods. Okay. You know what I mean? It wasn't right. so much, wasn't real heavy on the research. I didn't, I didn't even really talk to any researchers about it. I just did two, two one-off programs in the middle of the day in what'd the you, summer. What, what was the name? What'd you call it? Uh, I think I just called it the Bigfoot hike. I called oh, it like, you know, cool. soft work Bigfoot hike. That you makes know? it easy and simple. And it was in, uh, it was, it was like in, in July. I think I did it right, right in the middle of July, uh, in 2012, 2013. So, and it was fine. It was well attended, but you know, there were one off things. I didn't, you know, <clears throat> so the, na the naturalist, uh, between my times here had, uh, kind of farmed it out to other researchers. They sort of put on researchers as volunteers. And uh, she sort of stepped back, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got back here in 2016, I'm like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to deal with, you know, that was the kind of my thinking is like, I don't want to deal with Bigfoot, you know. Like, <laughs> right, I got, right. I got other, important things. Yeah, I'm there, like, right? I got other stuff to do. <laughs> I got birds um, and stuff. Right. Catalog, yeah. right? <laughs> so, um, so for a couple of summers, um, we would do the, the Bigfoot hike series, which they were, they took place at night. Um, and my... My role in it at the time was sort of to facilitate, you know what I mean? Keep everybody safe, make sure nobody broke their ankle on the trail. And, you know what I mean? Right, because if it's completely um, dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, and then I would call some owls and, uh, Ooh, and things like that. So I call my <laughs> owl in our backyard. Oh, yeah? We yeah. Have, um, oh, that's awesome. A barred yeah. owl. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. really yeah. good. I can really, I don't want to blow out your mic. We can yeah. Do Maybe okay. at the end I'll do, I'll do, I speak fluent now. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't um, hear all about it later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we, um, yeah, so I would call some owls and talk about nighttime, you know, animals and noises and, right. you know, how nature does weird things that we don't think about. And sometimes that could be construed as maybe something supernatural, you right. know, if you're not right. familiar, you know. Um, and Especially like a fox in heat. Right. Yeah. Oh, so. or, bob, or bobcats make some, you know, oh, we, we have, don't a, have, we have those. a ton of bobcats oh, here. Oh, you so. do? Yeah. How cool. Yeah, How about bears? Are there any bears There here? are. Uh, okay. Chances of seeing, like, we're nowhere near needing bear-proof dumpsters or anything. Oh, okay, like, yeah, so yeah. Chances of seeing one. Or, ne it's never zero, it's but almost, it's, it's pretty slim. It's probably the same as seeing a Sasquatch. Probably. I would okay. Have, I mean, and that's actually a <laughs> pretty good, less that's, less a, that's actually a pretty good, you know, analog for a, for an ant, you know, that you think about it, their their caloric intake is probably pretty similar. You know what I mean? Like how much, how many mm -hmm. calories they have to take in. Uh, most likely, their shelter and you know requirements are pretty similar. But I don't know if you can see, it's really thick out here. Yeah, I mean, there could be a I black mean, bear across the lake right now. There, there you know, there, there could be a sasquatch. There could be a woolly mammoth for that matter. I mean, you seriously, know, and we can like it's very thick out here. It is extremely thick. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, your chances of seeing a bear are here are pretty slim. So, Go ahead. No, I'll, but, I'll come back to that question um, you, unless you finish. So when, uh, yeah, because this is that's the thing about that question, like about how I got started. Yeah. It, 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 I have to kind of give the backstory to you know. Yeah. Um, get where I'm going with it. So, uh, so the in 2018, I by by 2018, I'd gotten to know the researchers who were doing the program uh, pretty well, mm -hmm. and like there there were cracks starting to form in my. You know, Skeptic, to, yeah. not even my skepticism, because having a science background, you're supposed to remain skeptical. You're not supposed to be cynical. You know what I mean? That's kind of the the right. the drawback is that skepticism sometimes um, turns into cynicism about it. You know what I mean? And that's where you were talking about your son, like not, mm -hmm. you know, well, that's because college professors get very, you know, cynical about it. Right. Um, so it, there were cracks being in my cynicism and my skepticism. You know, I was my like overly skeptical um mind was starting to kind of wane you know what i mean as far as that goes and then uh and by 2018 it was fall 2018 i had the closest thing that i could consider an experience at least it's something that i can't explain mm -hmm. off the top of my head uh you know um and this is this is kind of funny so uh i i, I was still dating my now wife mm -hmm. um and i'd taken her um squirrel hunting in the wildlife area because like hunting with like a gun yeah squirrel yeah, hunting? yeah yeah oh, okay so uh so she's from canton which is a mm -hmm. city up north up okay here. um and you know when i would go visit her while we were dating we'd go out and see live music we'd go you know do things like that and when she would come down here you guys met in college. 
Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. She actually was she was running down here. She was jogging down here one day, and I met her. In, uh, in Salt Fork? Yeah. In Salt Fork? And, yeah, yeah. Okay, and wait, so you guys went squirrel hunting here in Salt Fork? Uh, so in the wildlife area. Oh, okay, yeah. because you're allowed to go mm -hmm. hunting yeah, there. Yeah, it's public. We got to find I want to get 5,000 acres. The, to how he, yeah. he tracked his wife down. Oh, we did, he, did he come and say, hey, I work here at the park? I, yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's what I would have done. <laughs> that's, I mean, hey, if it works, you know. <laughs> um, so, uh. <laughs> so, but when she would come down here, you know, because this is Appalachia, I'd take her squirrel hunting because that's how you date in Appalachia. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I, I'm, I'm like that. I grew up squirrel hunting and things like okay. that. And we're still, we own a farm. We do a lot of like subsistence hunting. Where do you we, eat them? Or, yeah, yeah, cause yeah. I love like the idea of wild love. Uh, yeah. I don't hunt, but like anybody who has deer meat or yeah. like I love to cook. They, uh, yeah. They're so, great. Okay, cool. And they're sustainable. Okay, that's the thing. Yeah. They're a rodent. So they breed and breed and breed. Yep. So you're so, helping. So you're yeah. not really taking much at, you'd really have to try a, like a, you know, long campaign to make a dent in the squirrel right. population. Right, right. You know? So uh, I'm all about sustainable harvest. Yep, too. Me we don't, too. We don't harvest for antlers. Yep. Our, like if it's basically if it's you know within range is right. all that matters and it's you know what i mean right we don't harvest for for antlers it's only meat um yep. i try to raise my kids like that because good that's awesome um, well and it's unfortunate because a lot of hunting shows has have, have oh, kind of geared geared it, things yeah. to you know i've got daughters i've got three daughters um and i'm you know when you watch those hunting shows it's like no that okay hon that's not how people dress when they hunt that's how people dress when they hunt on camera right <laughs> like, you know exactly if i catch you wearing leggings yeah. Uh, deer season like you know yeah. you yeah. know like this um, is not what dana looks like right. when i'm in the cabin <laughs> the only yeah. reason i so, look like this is because we're doing it on film. so we uh <laughs> yeah so we still hunt and and you know right things like that and we eat a lot of wild game cool um i love right that. and and we could go into a whole like to me it's an ethical question like we're 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 part of a process that now you go to the grocery store you're completely removed from that right. whether it's gardening harvesting your meat anything like that, we're removed from a process that for our entire history we were part of. So that's a relatively new situation that, you know, mankind's in where we're completely removed from our... Right. Makes and sense. it's also, in my and opinion, more humane to it, eat yeah. a deer that's been living its whole life right. in the woods yeah. and not like crammed in some little exactly. cage, in a, you know. And that's, we raise a lot of meat right. too. We raise, market, right. you know, uh, we raise meat chickens. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, fresh air and sunshine. Oh my gosh. There's a world of good. And for, they're just happy. You know, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so... Like I said, I could really get on a yeah, soapbox too, about like, but let's, yeah. Um, let's... But so we do a lot of that. So we were out squirrel hunting here on the wildlife area. This was probably mid October. Um, okay. And we, uh, we hear coming from over the next ridge this long, mournful howl. Okay. Long, and I mean, like, you can feel it in your chest, you know? Okay. Um, long, like, long, like yeah. A minute? Yeah. Or... Um, I mean, 40 seconds. Yeah, like yeah, we're well, talking like 20, 20 seconds, yeah. you know, right. long, something that would have a big lung capacity. grows and peaks, you know what I mean? Right. And she looks at me and she says, what was that? And I'm like, I, I, I really don't, you know, we're quiet. I'm like, I really don't know. I'm not a coyote. You know what I mean? Right, it's not right. A, and I'm, like I said, I'm pretty good with animal noises. I'm, right. Well, yeah, yeah that's not, your profession. You know, it's not, right. So, um, you know, it spooks us a little bit. And we like, we make our way back to the, back to the car. And we're in the car and she's uh youtubing while i'm you know driving home she's youtubing animal sounds you know? right and i said hey look up the ohio howl you know and she plays it and she's like oh that's what it was that's what we heard so and, let's, and let's she, share what the ohio, the ohio right. howl is yeah so. well she asked me yeah. she's like what is that and i said oh it's a allegedly it's a bigfoot and that's a it's a recording that now it's generically known as an ohio howl you can hear ohio you know people have heard ohio howls all over but it was first recorded here in uh columbiana county and what was it, 94, 97, 94, 94 yeah. I'm not sure. Don't uh, quote us on date, but Matt but, Moneymaker. Yeah, Matt yourself. Moneymaker uh, in Cl right, Columbiana County. Um, yeah, um, which is actually not terribly far. We're a county. We're two counties away from Columbiana County. It's kind of northeast of here um, <coughs> along the river. Um, but the, uh, yeah, so she looked at me and she said, well, what was that? And I said, well, it's allegedly a Bigfoot. You know, right. I'm like, I, I've got no explanation as to what, Right. We what heard. Else it, it could I said. Be. I said. So, you know what we heard. Now we also have, and this is just this is just me being skeptical, and me also knowing how um, I not not to say overfished, but how how well researched Salt Fork is. Like how many people are mm -hmm. out all the time. I mean, just last week we had two research groups at the same time out here. Okay. I've got no way of knowing that there wasn't somebody on the next ridge with a Bluetooth speaker playing the exact video 
right. that you know the exact sound clip that she looked up right. trying to right. elicit a response i have no way of knowing that right. that wasn't the case i wonder if a big or if a if a bluetooth speaker would have that kind of capability to like make you feel it in your chest yeah I, I i don't know that, that's an interesting uh, yeah, detail I guess that's a, of your experience yeah. so uh mm -hmm. we heard that and that that stuck with me you okay. know what I mean? that was enough to where like the next time i hung out with the researchers it was like yeah so <laughs> you know so was this during the day or night time? this was during the day yeah. uh, so we're, we're talking let's see it's mid-october it was before dark but um squirrel hunting's always good in a couple hours before sunset right so we were probably out you know 4 35 something like that okay um and so you know right before it was it's starting to get starting to get lower light but it wasn't dark by any means um so we uh you know i had that experience and that got that kind of got um got to me a little bit like i said well, the next I time i hung imagine. out with next time i yeah. hung out with the researchers i was like yeah so got some news like uh, you know i'm not so skeptical um, anymore <laughs> yeah so uh so i started really doing i'm trying to think of what the, well so the first book that i picked up that i like you know actually read through was uh ken gearhard's uh the bigfoot you know um, um the, yeah it's like the bigfoot case book, or, case book. No, yeah or no no that, that's, that's black blackburn yeah. um but yeah the the but yeah, uh, i know what you're talking about. that was the first one you know i picked it up on amazon or whatever and um first one that i actually read through and i'm like oh man you know some of this stuff seems really plausible and uh then the more p i started really listening to people who had experiences here at the park and this was another thing that sort of started to melt my you know melt my icy cynicism about it was like I started to talk to people, you know, of course, I mean, you, you folks talk to a lot of, you talk to a lot of people yeah, and you go do. to the conferences and you know, the demographics that come to conferences, mm -hmm. you, you know, huge variety in what you get. You know, you always talk to people who like are kind of boring and the Bigfoot thing makes them more interesting. So they might elaborate, you know what I mean? Right. A little Absolutely. more. And then you talk to folks who, I mean, I hate to say it, but clearly had some sort of maybe psychotic episode, you know what I mean? Like where you get this out, you know? But then you talk to people who have no no skin in the in the exactly. game exactly who no reason whatsoever in such an improbable sounding story you know what i mean that it's like why on earth would you make this up you know and we I mean? even have some people that we talk to <clears throat> with me. their witness experience yeah. who don't want to be on the podcast right yeah exactly they just don't want it to be yeah. known that they've had an experience they don't want people to think right. they're crazy yeah those are the ones that really blow me away yeah 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 right we can actually circle back to that because i've got a good story that and it was one of the first stories that i heard that like raised the hairs yeah, on the dude. back of my neck yeah right? let's hear the story um, oh, okay. actually i think you need to squinch yeah, oh, in a little bit um, You're like off so, here. we got to get you closer yeah. it's cold out here <laughs> so uh <laughs> So I was working here at the park and uh, I've got a map down at the nature center that I let people put pens in if they've had it. It's just a map of Ohio. Oh, okay. If, uh, you know, people if they, put big If they've had it, if they've sighting. had a, uh, okay. if they had an experience, they can um, stick wow, their pen in it. Wow, that's so know. cool. It's a whole, all of Ohio too. And okay. it's interesting to me with a natural resources background that a majority, even if they're not from eastern ohio a majority of the sightings are all from this eastern part of the state right the, the really heavily wooded um and you know uh braided with waterways right you know right. part of the state uh not a whole lot in farm country out west you right. know so uh so i've got that i've got a lot of bigfoot stuff down at the nature center and um we had uh i had a couple um probably in their early 40s and the wife was doing this sort of like oh go go tell him, just tell him, you know, oh, I'm like, he'll, right. he'll listen, go, right. go tell him, you know? And finally the guy kind of came up and he was like, not really. And she's like, he's got, he's got a story. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Shoot. I'm, and I'll, I'll listen. That's another thing is I'll basically listen to any, anyone that, you know, and I'll never, ever like turn my nose up at it. it no matter how I land, a lot of people just want to be listened to. Right. Yep. Even if they're, even if you're making it up, they just want to be listened to. Yep. You know what I mean? I agree with like, you. Like, um, but I'll listen to pretty much anybody, you know, mm -hmm. And chat with them about it like oh that's interesting you know um even if in my head i'm thinking like you know <laughs> right. this seems like a weird you know <laughs> a weird thing um i don't know that you're i don't know that you know, I, anyway um so this guy uh begins to tell me he says uh he was in um he lived in southern ohio and i can't really give i didn't get like permission to give incredible details yeah, but like oh yeah. uh, in south central ohio you get into areas like uh the big state forest down there called Shawnee State Forest, and those mm -hmm. counties down there are all counties that you know they're they're still really depressed. 
they never really bounced back from the the when the mines pulled out you okay, know what i mean right um a lot of coal it's coal country down there it's the heart of coal country i mean really that part of it, so basically here you were more in West Virginia than Ohio as right. far as environment right. goes. Yeah. And it down, feels like that. Yeah. Down there, you're more in Kentucky than Ohio. Right. Like when you right. get, you know, to those parts. And there were, there were even some tobacco farms that far south in the state. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's that, it's that kind of environment. Um, so uh, the way he put it was he grew up incredibly poor, which is not uncommon for that part of the state. I mean, it's not un uncommon here. I, I lived in a town that had a VFW and then used to have a post office. And then that was, gone you know what i mean like right. it's not that uncommon here um and uh but it, the way he put it was he was you know grew up incredibly poor and his, his dad was given a trailer they said you know if you can move it someplace you can have it right so they uh moved it to another of his dad's friend's property you know and uh, i forget how he put it it was um sometimes we could keep the lights on sometimes we couldn't you know what i mean um but he told me he had very distinct memories of his mom rounding up him and his siblings in the living room and like turning off all the lights and saying, hey, things outside, you know, and he could hear it rubbing and bumping and scratching right. around that just walking around the tree. And sometimes it'd be 10 minutes and sometimes it would be an hour, but it would happen, you know, pretty often. Wow. So they'd all kind of just hunker down and wait. Um, and, you know, he also has uh, memories of the landowner telling his dad, like, hey, don't send the boys out hunting today. That thing's been on the edge of the field watching all the, you know so he had this thing and this so guy, what time frame did he say approximately when he i mean was this an older gentleman and like he was in his early 40s so this okay, was, so, it was, so we're looking yet, like so. probably the 1980s okay you okay. know okay. in southern ohio um and he says you know that things on the edge of the field um so he he didn't pay any attention to you know it was just something that happened you know didn't talk about it at school right but bigfoot wasn't wasn't part of his thinking you know uh, fast forward a few years, he's at a friend's house and they're watching whatever TBS and Harry and the Hendersons comes on mm -hmm. right? and he tells his friend, he's like, Oh, that's the thing. And his oh, friend's like, wow. his friend's like, what you, that's Bigfoot. And he's like, no, it's the thing. You guys didn't have the thing. Like we had the thing, you know, it was the <laughs> thing. It was the thing. Like that's, right. the, that's, the, yeah. and he's, his friend's like, it, it's, you it, know, it's Bigfoot. It's made up that, you know, it's, and he's like, no, no, it's a, it's, it's a, a we always thing. just call it, we always just called it the thing, you know? Right. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, wow. You know, in that that story, and the fact that his wife had to like push him, you know, him and, yeah. um, that kind of has always stuck with me. 